it is that time again. It is time to revisit the old windows. We've been prepping for it all week long, updating programs, getting things going, getting back into the programming side of things. The Windows utility is what we're looking at today, and it has quite a few issues. Now, I started to front load this yesterday. I worked about three hours on some issues, cleared up uh, a lot of the stuff. But if we look at the Windows utility right here, well, it's a little bit different um, with 200 and something outstanding issues. This was over 300 yesterday, so I knocked this down by quite a bit, uh, which is great. But we're going to really start tackling some issues. The thing about how I've learned to do my development cycles is, one, have a project right here. So how this looks is as we see good issues here, we put it into our project to fix. Now, the downside to do an open source in GitHub and most of the detractors where people are like, hey, I just like to make my program myself and then release it. And I get that. It's a lot faster. You don't have to deal with really crazy issues. You know, a lot of these issues in here, probably out of 200 and something, there's probably going to be about 20 or 30 really good issues that are properly documented that actually help. And then you're going to get a lot like, I haven't even looked at this one. My windows broke. I bet you it's just not helpful at all. So, you know, when you are installing something, it asks you to select the location and uh, the drives freezes for a minute. And when you open up, it takes 10 times the time it used to take. Uh, go here, take, I don't remember when I click these, see error. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, what, what, what's this link? Let's see, someone might have actually helped him. Let's see. Oh, oh no, that's that's actually just the link of what's going on. It, it's just timing out on him. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not here for tech support for people, and this is not anything with the utility. I can tell you right now. It's a bad link. Looking at this drive D, there's a caution symbol. It's probably like a problem with BitLocker being encrypted or possibly a BitLocker service. Uh, maybe not starting properly and it's finally starting to get going and then it, it starts responding. It could be something like that, but I can't answer these types of things because then everyone's going to submit issues and going, Hey, this part of my windows broke. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> so possibly a bit locker service. I'll probably put that in here and then close the issue. It's not something that is anything with the script. We can take a look at that, but it's, it's important to look at these kinds of issues. <laughs> Um, just to understand, but most of them are going to be nonsensical. They're not going to be helpful, but we still got to take them seriously just because it could be something with the service. So that's it. Oh man. And oh, let's check in with chat too. Nice shirt, Chris. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was actually working out with my son today. So I apologize for the attire. Uh, I, I was working out from like, uh, my wife and, and daughter are out of time with a girl's trip. So I was like, come on, buddy, I can't have you playing video games inside all day. So we had a <laughs> had a good workout this morning for like an hour or two. I I got him to the point where he said he was going to barf. And I was like, all right, that's how you know you got a good workout. <laughs> so <laughs> that was great. Um, but I still got to work out later today. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go do my CrossFit probably around 430. <laughs> I'm becoming a CrossFit bro. <laughs> Did you know I do CrossFit? <laughs> but but yeah, uh, it, that's the big thing. Just I was like, I don't feel like changing, and I was like, I'd, I I could I could have thrown on a shirt or something, but I was like, whatever, it's fine. But it should be fun tackling a lot of these issues with the, the Windows utility. That's the big thing. I really kind of wanted to address because it's been a bit since we looked at it, but also I've learned a lot more about GitHub and I, I think I need to make a YouTube video because I made a tweet the other day and I was like, as I was going through a lot of these issues and I, it, it dawned on me, 90% of the people that use GitHub don't know how to use GitHub. <laughs> and I was definitely part of this 90%. That's not me throwing shade at anybody because you go back a year or two, 
I was pretty bad. I was definitely part of that 90%. I could, I could do gets and polls. I, I could do like a git poll and fetch and understand some of the basics of GitHub a year ago, but I really wasn't using it properly from a project management standpoint where I've gotten a lot better with that as you're going to see throughout this stream as we tackle the issues. We start using the project side of things so we can organize those issues before we start our development. And then we look at the PRs that are in there and say, hey, are these good PRs or bad PRs? We close the ones that are bad. We merge the ones in the test branch that are good. And then once we're done with all this, then we can start developing new features or fixing existing features, but we'll be ready to actually program once we get through this side of things. But it's really important to understand why I'm doing this. First, we're tackling the issues just to see if there's anything funky. And if there's not, then we're like, okay, what's next? And then move on. Uh, then we'll look at the PRs, see if those are any good. And then finally, before we start probably the really taking this stuff and making a lot of improvements, that's when uh, we merge the existing test branch into main. We do all those commits, and then we'll have a brand new fresh test branch that we'll create and all of the issues will be resolved, all of our projects, or they might maybe not all be resolved, but they'll be really well organized. So then we can start fixing those bugs and really creating a whole new one. So that's why every single release cycle, uh, doing it this method, the program will get better and better and better. And that's where how you leverage open source. But I totally get why some people come to open source, create like a GitHub project, and then it just gets away from them and then it just starts becoming worse and worse because they don't have these systems in place. And that's why I do what I do now. It's really cool. All right. All right. Well, let's get into some of this. You guys are going to laugh your butt off because we got to, we got to first tackle these issues. Let's, let's tackle the issue. Number one came in five hours ago. My windows broke. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, first, let's just see a BitLocker. There's a BitLocker drive encryption service. That could be set to automatic, probably. I'm tempted to do that. And in the tweak section, let's take a peek at that. Uh, let's pull up GitHub as well. When you till, what do we got? Let's go to the new test branch, fetch origin. Why does it say publish this branch? Hmm, let's grab that. Ah, right, there we go. It's like, I don't want to test that. Uh, just give me a new new branch. All right, cool. That's fetched. Everything's up to date. Let's come into here. We're going to open up that. We'll come back to win one shot. I kind of want to tackle the open source win util first before we revisit one shot, which is a C sharp, like closed source program I'm personally developing. But I really want to do win utility just to see if there's any really big issues I want to tackle because we've been running this and, and developing this in the public for almost three years now. And uh, a lot of people use it. And it's a great place to see problems that folks have, which is good. Uh, so let's go to our config and look at tweaks. And I believe there's a service tweak in here. Let's just go BitLocker service and see what that is set to. I bet you that's the problem though with this guy. I'll, I'll tweet back to him and maybe change that one setting. Um, but let's see, what is BitLocker drive encryption service is going to be called BDE SVC. So if we look at that, BDE SVC set to manual, um, which I, I changed all this, and I believe this was automatic. We can also look at one more file. Um, and this one was actually on the one shot. I grabbed a fresh VM install just to see what uh what that did and i think it was just my program cs file had all that so this one read only services there's bde svc and this sets it to manual hmm okay and all this sets it to auto and then this is delayed auto okay 
So that's right. So sounds like he probably just disabled the service and that's why it's the problem. My pro my utility didn't do this because if it's set to manual, it'll auto start and I don't disable any windows services. So uh, the problem with some of the people that use it and submit issues is sometimes they go rogue and start doing stuff and they can't figure out what caused the problem. Um, but yeah, that that's basically what it is. I'll go ahead and be nice and reply back to this instead of just closing it. Uh, we'll just have him set it to automatic since he's using BitLocker. I kind of hate BitLocker, to be honest with you. Let's take a little screenshot for him. And we'll put that in here. We'll just be nice. All right, we'll close that with a comment. Um move on to the next issue only 214 more to go some features do not work well let's see how descriptive this guy is <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna get real jaded real fast this is gonna be me shitting on a bunch of people submitting issues to get up i can see it already oh man describe the bug a clear concise description of what the bug is I clean reinstalled windows when I try to remove edge and all Microsoft store apps, the tool just simply gives me a done message. I tried PowerShell, PowerShell seven as admin Another tool had the same. Some things didn't work like open admin console for Winget. Mm. See, I think this is some, some of it, you got to realize that many users are still learning windows or don't know a lot. Um, and what they do is they just start running a bunch of crap. And what I want the tool to do is be good to these people. One, they look at what's already run and go, hey, these are some bad settings. And they'll just undo what some other tool might have done. And, and I really want it to be good for the common person. Removing all Windows Store apps is not recommended just because it's gonna it's gonna rip out some stuff from the store and you're not gonna get that back without doing like a dism restore health or that type of thing and that's that's problematic so for this guy um the issue's garbage but it it, it kind of highlights a, a a place where the the program could get better where he shouldn't have run that so when you run the tool like uh Oh, let's just run it real quick. When you run the tool and you go into the tweak setting, these miscellaneous tweaks, I think I'm going to rename to advanced tweaks. I'm going to get rid of power throttling because it doesn't really work very well. And I'm going to redo power configuration in Windows. Uh, there's a more modern uh, sleep standby kind of state that you can set in Windows that we could optimize that we may do. So that... But people that go through and start messing with this, this like when you click desktop customizations, some people go in here and really start remove all Microsoft Store apps. Ah, uh, you know, that's going to cause issues. I mean, it says use with caution. This will remove all. But it's probably what's causing many of the issues for this guy. And getting them back after you remove everything is a difficult task. Um, I, I always, if you need to, you can do a DISM restore health while downloading a, downloading like a full blown version of windows ISO. And then with that full blown windows ISO, then you can do a, a dash sources and then specify the sources in that windows ISO and it'll restore it exactly how it should be for Microsoft. But that's a more complex type setup. Um, and he probably ran some other tools as well. Uh, I don't know what I could do here. I'm going to revamp this. I can't tell this guy that, though. I think I'm just going to close the issue. I can't I can't really help him, so to speak, uh, other than to be like, he's not really asking for help, though. He's just saying some features don't work. We'll do a better job of explaining those features in the future. Uh, I'm going to revamp miscellaneous tweaks to work um to work better <laughs> we'll just make it simple uh 
an upcoming update. We're going to close this. Yeah, it, there is a caution tag, I guess, but we'll we'll make it more advanced because I think, I mean, some beginning users know they're beginning users, some don't, but I, at least I, I'm changing from miscellaneous to advanced tweaks. Um, and then I'll probably put like a little caption underneath it that you can always see without a tool tip like that and just say, if you don't know... If you're not an advanced user, do not do any of these tweaks. And I think that would keep it from uh, people messing stuff up and clicking stuff they shouldn't. In That's why I kind of added the recommended selections so people can just grab what they need. Desktop, laptop, minimal, and then go. You know, that's, that's the things that I, I really want to do a little bit better in this one. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, Brave browser can't be updated if installed through WinUtil. Uh, not much I can do here. This is an issue. Is with Winget. They should fix this in the next update. But there is nothing I can do to remedy this. Let's close that. I, I actually ran into this issue, I think yesterday, because I used Brave, and uh, that was a problem. Yeah, I think getting rid of irreversible tweaks, too, or making the irreversible stuff like its own thing. Like, I think uh, I'll make advanced tweaks, and then I'm going to make do not use irreversible power user I don't know what we call that. What's a, what do you think, chat? What do we, what do we call the, hey, you're going to screw something up tweaks. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that ask for that. Like, there's a lot of people that want to remove Edge. They want to remove the Microsoft Store. They want to get rid of Windows Defender. Even though that will corrupt your Windows install. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But people think Windows, when you do that, you can easily just restore it. Not so. I mean, you can restore it most times with like SFC and DISM, like I, t I said, but it's not a foolproof process. Nothing I would say. It's it's not just a tick box to get it back. Dangerous. I like it. Extreme changes and dangerous. I like it. Mad scientist tweaks. I like that too. Uh, I think we'll go with advanced tweaks and then it's going to be a subcategory that we're just going to call extreme and dangerous changes. I like that. That tells a user, hey, there ain't no coming back once you step into this realm. And I kind of dig it. I dig it. I, I like that. <laughs> ain't no coming back tweaks. <laughs> For the Jim Bobs of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, this bug occurs when upgrading or installing from there. Separate opens. Checks. Data acquired from source is missing suggests when get source upgrade or when source reset, but unfortunately did not fix the error. Hmm. We do have a screenshot. No, no, we don't. Okay. Uh, apparently he linked that incorrectly. That's okay. He just done no markdown. That's okay. We can do a copy paste. Uh, failed searching source when get. Mm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to replicate this. Let's just go to install, upgrade all. Well, I don't have that problem. Maybe it's Winget installation that he's running into a problem with. Could be. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can figure out anything or what caused that to happen for him. Obviously, this is working for me, but works on my computer. <laughs> that's the worst reply ever. That's the, that's the Linux user in me. Works on my machine. <laughs> no, no, no. We can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, switch to chocolatey. I mean, we could do that. Um, I have chocolatey installed because there are some packages I really like to use, especially uh, when it comes to some of the development, especially around Node.js. When you do Winget through Node.js, it's not great. Same with Python. 
for, for whatever reason, I like to install Python and Node.js through Chocolatey instead of Winget. You can install it in Winget, but I do enjoy the Chocolatey packages better. Um, can't replicate this. Uh, it's probably like an old version of Winget maybe that he has, and maybe he stripped out some of the other stuff. I do have a new... I think it's in here. I want to say... It could be this bug using the difference between PowerShell and PowerShell core. This has been deprecated. The git WMI object that needs to be replaced with git CIM instance. That's on my to-do list in progress. And also this right here, uh, I was going to change the way Winget because doing the minute MS app install, this, this right here, way of upgrading Winget requires you to already have a sign in to the Microsoft store and have it up. And this is like a manual way of doing it, which I don't like, but there was this, this script I found that would be really good. And I think maybe bot, uh, taking this script and then changing it to, to get it. And, and I think changing our Winget install script to something like this would be much better because this will force the install no matter if you're signed into Microsoft or not. It'll grab all the dependencies and install Winget properly. So I would say it's probably like an old Winget that's not not going. So I'm going to change the way Winget installs. I'm going to let this guy know though. Uh, Winget is installed and used via 347, I think it was, and also updating some calls that should work with other versions of PowerShell. Sometimes old, uh, actually sometimes newer versions of PowerShell core don't work properly with the script. It also could be Winget uh, being out of date on your machine. So we'll close that. There's a lot of things there, but I can't really replicate it. So we're going to close it. Well, what if someone deletes the Microsoft store, then they're screwed? Not necessarily, because you got to remember AppX and how that works can be all done through PowerShell. The Microsoft store is just a front end for PowerShell, really. Uh, so you can you can install that uh, and actually accept licenses and everything directly in PowerShell. People don't understand how powerful PowerShell is. It's in the name, but everything can be done. It, it, think of like using Linux without terminal. That's me with Windows, man. You you take PowerShell out of the equation. I'm like, oh God, you're hamstringing me here. If you want to automate stuff, you got to learn PowerShell. If you're a big Windows user and you don't know PowerShell and you're, you consider yourself advanced, one, you should reconsider yourself and your classification of advanced. And two, you need to learn PowerShell. <laughs> That's just my, my two cents. Chocolatey sometimes does out of date packages too. So that's, uh, you know, there's times where I like Winget better and there's times where I like Chocolatey better. For upgrading all packages across the board, Winget, I feel like, does a better job of maintaining the packages on the system than Chocolatey. Uh, Scoop can also be really good. Uh, there was something I was looking at the other day for Scoop, and it's actually been a lot of YouTubers have covered it uh, fan control. If you guys have never done, I think it's fan control releases. This is an amazing thing. If you if you want to control your fan curve, personally, I do everything through BIOS, so I don't really care. But the only install is Scoop. Yeah, even Jay's Two Cents uh, covered this. And it's really neat. So if you really want to control how loud your system is, your fan controls, temps, all those things, this is a great open source project. It's honestly better than a lot of the crap you'd pay for. So if you don't know about fan control, I'm going to put a link in chat just so y'all have something. Amazing program. So look that up if you're into that type of thing. But uh, that was one thing because someone said something about Scoop. This is only in Scoop Extras. 
and chocolatey nor Wingit has an install for fan control. So I, I think honestly, I would prefer to have all three because there's times I would use scoop instead of chocolatey or I'd use Wingit instead of the other two. It, it's not exactly what you'd want. It's not like a standardized package manager like you get in Linux, but there are solutions there. You just got to know which is the best for what you're trying to do. And sometimes one's better than the other. It just depends on the scenario. But there's not like a one just fits all, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, Nix for Windows, pretty much. Uh, so tweaks break windows. Wow. I really wish people would be better with like the description. Like, let's see. After I applied tweaks from the tweaks tab, windows 11 became to freeze. And after blue screen, I tried to reformat windows twice, wasted some days before applying the tweaks. Windows was working normally, but after applying tweaks, it began to freeze. So I'm sure something related to those tweaks. Since I'm not a pro user, I don't know what to upon what happening and what tweaks cause it, but I'm sure it's something with the tweaks tab because I waited to apply it and the freeze only occurs after applying the tweaks. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it. What are you doing? Like, here, let's just click a bunch of stuff. Let's run the tweaks. It's been a little bit. Okay. What do we got? Oh, that's still going. What is that? Oh, that's still installing my Visual Studio stuff. We can leave that going in the background. Tweaks are finished. Done. Okay. I mean, I don't know what to tell him. Jeez. I mean, one, I do need to figure out something with that taskbar setting. This search down here, it's like annoying to all get out. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, hide. Yeah, the shitty search bar appeared. <laughs> Maybe he ran the desktop on the laptop. Maybe, I, I think what ends up happening is people don't use the recommended settings and then they start going click, click, click and they just start going wild over here. And that's going to that's gonna be a sad day for you. I think really breaking this out, we fix fix the noobs clicking over here that's what we got to do loop and next i appreciate the the prime and the tier one yeah it could be hardware related it could be a specific thing with this setup um could be a bad link a lot of times in windows this is what i see a lot of users do they make like a network drive somewhere like this is like on my home network and then they copy it over into your quick settings so this is something i feel like a lot of users do and i've done it personally myself where i'll click it and i'll go i'm gonna pin this to quick access you pin it to quick access and then for whatever reason you have an internet issue or that drive drops off let's say it's a map drive that happens a lot and then the map changes well anytime you open up your new browser even if it's like a new tab and you're you're browsing around and it lags and it's just like what's going on and it's like not responding and then all of a sudden it pops up like a 30 seconds or a minute later clear out all of your quick access if you clear out all of your quick access it's going to fix your issue most times more times than not it's just a bad link in quick access i really wish windows did a better job of illustrating that instead of doing this really time out approach because then it's kind of hard to troubleshoot but you just kind of get a feel for it a lot of my troubleshooting in Windows is like, ah, I've seen this before. I know the error messages don't make any sense, but really when you, you put your ear up against the, you know, the windows and you hear it, it it's really trying to tell you this. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on when you're troubleshooting. Any VPN recommendation? Man, there's a hard to recommend a VPN nowadays because... Uh, Almost all of them are owned by like Cape Technologies. ExpressVPN just got bought out this year by uh, Cape Technologies. PIA, Private Internet Access, is owned by Cape Technologies. I mean, I think Nord is still somewhat independent. I don't think that's a Cape, um, but they're terrible. They got hacked and then didn't tell anybody about it for 18 months. They, the hacker had 
console access to their entire, I want to say it was the EU region, uh, for a period of 30 days. And then nobody told anybody about it from Nord. And then it finally came out and got reported on. It was such a, such a shit show. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know on that. Uh, Molvad maybe like I'd Molvad's never done any affiliate links. So you never really hear about Molvad and you, there's just no link to click on. So most influencers or web pages that recommend VPNs, well, they don't get paid for recommending Molvad. So they'd never do. It's like one of those catch 22s to where you just never really find anything good. Some YouTube videos, some YouTubers are honest and uh, tell people that you could use Molvad, but most times not. Most times they'll still they'll shield their own product because full transparency, I recommended ExpressVPN back in the day, like two years ago when they were their own thing, and they weren't bad. They were pretty fast. I mean, for most what people are using VPNs for, which let's be real, most of it's just torrents. And, you know, when it comes to that, uh, Express was fine. It probably still is. Uh, but those links, I was making, I think at one time when I first, I, I didn't even promote it in a video. I didn't even do like an ad spot, like click on my link down below. I just put it on like one of my recommended pages. And I think I made like $1,000 that month. If I would have really shilled it and gone all in and put it in videos, Oh man, I probably would have made five, six thousand in a month. So just to give some transparency for you know, I'm a relatively probably mid-sized creator, that's a lot of money. So VPNs are just something you just can't trust from anybody like me. <laughs> because there's just so much money on the line. And uh I I would say the only ones I'd recommend are the ones that I don't get paid for. <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. But I know Molvad's fine. Um, I think Proton has a Proton VPN now. I don't think they do an affiliate program either. But those two, I think, are relatively good-ish for privacy and security. But I don't ever think of privacy and security as a VPN thing. That's more of an operating system thing, in my opinion. And uh, trying to shield yourself through proxies and VPNs is kind of a a hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just my two cents. I think Surfshark is owned by Cape Technologies too. Uh, who is Surfshark owned by? Uh, don't know who that is. Okay. Surfshark and Nord Security merged under one holding. Yeah, so Surfshark's owned by Nord. The parent company of Nord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, <laughs> not trustworthy. I would not recommend Surfshark. <laughs> uh, just as bad. Uh, same thing. Uh, that's where like a lot of these merges, like you got to look at the parent companies, guys. Like, yeah. So Mulvad's at least independent. Let's let's just verify that real fast because hell, someone maybe maybe that came in and was like, here is a truckload of money, Mulvad. Um. Who owns Molvad? It is operated by Molvad VPN AB, a subsidiary of a Magicon. Both companies are 100% owned by founders. Okay, great. So yeah, Molvad something I'd still say is okay for now, but I wouldn't make a video about that. That's just ridiculous to me. Anyways, let's close this issue. I can't replicate. Um, sorry, Kelvin. Cool name. <laughs> did you hear Sousa's forking rel? Yeah, I did. That's pretty funny. Like you got Oracle forking it. You got Sousa forking it. Oh man. Red hat. Jeez. Talk about trying to, trying to just generate a little extra revenue might've cost them their entire business because the whole point of red hat was long-term releases and enterprise. And I don't know any sysadmin with any kind of brains that would run a red hat system right now or any kind of rel release for that matter. There's just too much change, too much unreliability. The whole purpose of choosing that distro is for reliability. And here we are. So, nope. Let's say Red Hat and all rel-based distros are just something you should probably stay away from for at least a year. Let's see where the dust settles. Too much change, though. Way too much change. 
All right, moving on to this error when trying to download apps. Failed to find support support. Uh, this is a WinGet issue, uh, which we already kind of covered. If we look at our project files here, we're going to fix this by uh, 347 issue. Now we'll just say on next update. So 347 is pretty important. We're going to push this to the top. I think that's one of the most important ones to fix. Um, I also need to fix the edge being managed by organization. I get this a lot where people asked it. I need to look at the registry policies in the tweaks and make sure that that's fixed as well. Because that's one for the edge users out there. I used to not support edge at all, but love it or hate it, it's becoming used more and more. And I'm tired of answering questions on it. So we're going to fix it. Steam Deck greater than Rogue Ally? I would say so. Because when you look at the Steam Deck, um, the software is what makes it great. It's not the hardware. Obviously, the hardware of the Rogue Ally is way better. Like, Asus did a great job with the Ally to where it's just amazing hardware. But what makes the portable great is the Steam Deck software. Like, the fact I can just have it by my bedside, click the little button, bam go it the, the suspend works great the bluetooth works great everything just works and it's fantastic it's probably why linux has three percent market share now but you know <sighs> all right we're gonna close that moving on um setup auto login doesn't work running auto login doesn't do anything not much else to say about it really auto login that's just this one. This should run. Let's see what it does. Is this done yet? Okay. Um, I don't think the tweaks work. Did we launch this as admin? We're going to close that. Let's rerun those tweaks one more time. So if it is doing something funky, I want to make sure we're going we're gonna to just set it like this so we have a real good overview of it when we run our tweaks. I know it's like kind of small, but just want to make sure it's perfect so when people are doing this they're not messing things up okay that's fine some versions of windows have different services so these warnings are not anything to worry about all right we'll take a peek at that a little bit more all right so he was saying the auto login doesn't do anything well i'd say he's right doesn't do anything. Why is the search coming up? Mm, Got to look at that too. All right. Well, uh, let's go down. I want to say it's in the private settings. Should be an auto login. Okay, this is what it's running, but this is not working. Let's just see what happens if we run this ourselves. We're going to come into here. Let's just pull up a new PowerShell paste it that should launch so yeah so when you accept that then you would uh put that in and then enable and disable auto login yeah that would be fine hmm so that does work for here but it's not working here because we don't oh no it is working here now maybe curl isn't going to the proper spot huh yeah, it's in temp. So if we go here, oh, I got to fix that setting. I hate the search bar. I don't know how that got set to like that. But if we go into just the C drive temp, usually where this should drop it or not. Ah, where is this? Where are we? Ah, oh, app data local temp. Okay. And there's auto log in there. So if we remove auto login and then we click this button, right, where'd it go? Oh, did I close it? I think I did. Let's do auto login. Oh, it downloaded and ran it. Huh. Looking back at the temp file. Yeah, so it's removed. And then as soon as we click this, it downloads and runs it, but it didn't do it initially. Huh. 
maybe we'll reboot. Let's give it a reboot and see if we can't uh, figure that out. We'll close this out and give us a little reboot here. Cancel, close, close. What do we have? I guess there's an update too here. All right, now 99 degrees right now. Should get up over 100 before I have to go work out outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a fun one it's better than yesterday yesterday was 104 oh let's see what we get all right go windows bootloader <laughs> like the minecraft themed grub yeah it's pretty cool i like it i might switch it up again i think i, I forget why we grabbed that i think i was just messing around one day Okay, so this is this. Let's just wait. No, this is not running as admin. Let's run it as admin. Let me grab an IRM. I wonder why that font's not quite coming up. Uh, let's just come over into CD environment. Let's remove auto login. So auto login's not there. If we do an IRM, Chris Titus. We launch into our utility, try the auto login again. That works. Huh. I'm trying to think. I th I did accept a EULA by clicking on the file itself after it downloaded. So possibly that EULA added like a registry setting or possibly an INI file or something in that directory. Let's see. Let's just close out of this. But there was an issue where it didn't do anything. Let's just go into our CD. Is there anything in here that might point to that? Um, set up log, squirrel, VS Code, when you till log. No, it's none of that. Auto login, EULA. Okay, okay. Except EULA true for this. Yeah, this is just an XML file on the Windows driver kit. That's not exactly what we wanted. Let's see what uh, sys internals auto login script except EULA. Do you start process? It looks to be a slash, not a dash. Try forward slash except EULA. Very picky about the quote placement. So for the argument list, we should do that. And then someone new should be able to run it directly. So we'll add that to our script right here. When we go to output run it, we would do cmd-c. I don't think that works, but except EULA might work. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, I think the big issue here is nothing happening, and uh, I guess I could create my own interface, grab, man, I don't want to grab people's username, domain, or password. Even though it's open source, it's still something I don't want to do. Let's do a... Um, what if we do it like a quotes like that? Nothing. I don't think dash dash help will give me anything. But you have to launch it like that. Man. We could read the current user using variables. And that might work. I'd be okay with that dynamic system. But it would require no password for the user. Or we could read it directly. Could just remove the feature. I like auto login though. I mean, you're already insecure in Windows. You might as well have auto login. <laughs> I mean, just keeping it real. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what we got. Except Eula. Grab. Uh... <laughs> real men don't use passwords. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> 
or we do and then we just auto fill them uh jeez for now i think i'm gonna leave this but i think it's an outstanding issue something that needs to be addressed well i kind of like uh what if we do accept eula i mean i kind of like the autofill here which let's just do that accept eula let's see what that gives me if this doesn't work then yeah that's what i'm talking about okay great perfect there we go fixed ah it's always something tricky argument list wanted more arguments by by specifying it that way but this way it doesn't and it'll just grab the eula automatically let's make that commit happen that should fix it and then we can link it so oh uh, before we do this though it's one more problem <laughs> kind of need a closing bracket that would not be good all right there we go so now we're just removing that line doing the accept eula Fixing, fixing, accept Eula on auto login. We'll do that commit, push. I mean, I, I don't have to push after every commit, but eh, yeah, no. Let's grab our commit number here. Uh, I think we can just copy that. And I think we can just paste that right in here to close this issue down. Oh, not commit. I think that should get me the right commit. Let's make sure. Yeah, perfect. So that will document it. We did the commit, and then we'll just keep doing that throughout. It's a little slow going, but we're we're churning through it. All right, restoring Windows Update does not work. I ran the recommended settings for Windows Updates, decided to roll them back to default. Now I get this error during Windows Update. Run Windows updates. Antivirus should install missing registry and put it back and thinks it works every time I run it. Okay, well let's let's see if we can't replicate. Oh, I see the problem with a lot of the Windows again. I've said it. I said it before. I'll say it again. People running a whole bunch of updates thinking they're just gonna super duper optimize their system by running twenty different stupid config tools. And then, I mean, it's going to work just fine. I'm sure he did something else. I bet he ripped out like Windows Defender using something. I guess let's install. See if we get any errors. I think he said the error was on a Microsoft Defender. Yeah, you need the intelligence updates. I mean, I don't think we're going to get an error here. Maybe we can do a reboot. Force. Let's GPO force it after this. Oh, geez. Should have already done that before I did this, though. All right. While we're waiting on that, I guess. I probably should have done the updates anyways. Uh, do you use NeoVim in Windows? Man, NeoVim is life. How is my NeoVim looking in here? Oh, that's right. I was using LazyVim. Um... What's the check health look like? I think we're pretty good. So we got like a git, a rip grep, lazy gits right now. I don't think I like this config though. So we got a couple errors here. What What's it not liking? Bash.s is not valid win32. Looks like we have some errors. I think we blow out lazy vim. I'm just not a, I'm not a huge fan. Why we're, why we're waiting on our updates anyways. Um, we already have NeoVim here. Get pull, get status. What, 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 what's wrong here? Uh, I think I was using like some kind of weird custom one here. Get stash. Um, get st stash drop. And let's just, I'm just going to re-pull because I have no idea. It's been so long since I've been in the here that I'm like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to pull that. Um, let's do a win setup. I can't remember what my win setup was. It looks like a bunch of errors to me. Uh, why wouldn't that work? Hmm. 
any good tutorials for learning Vim? Vim Tutor. Vim Tutor is amazing. Highly recommend it. Run it often. Don't just run it once and then forget it. I need I, I need to run it more. I'd I'd put me on a scale of one to ten for a Vim user, I'd put me at like a a three or a four. <laughs> Slightly above competent, but uh, debatable. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried the tiling window manager for Windows. It's not great. Not great. Oh, you don't know what Vim Tutor is? Oh gosh, we gotta run Vim Tutor. Um, I don't know what's going on with that script. Uh are we admin? Yeah, we're admin. Hmm. Uh is that not working? Oh, come on. What yeah, what do we got here? I guess we could go the long way. Ooh, what is it doing? Win get install. Oh, this is back when I was trying to use Veil. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Can we just create? Um, is that not ah? Look, uh, since it's not set up, I don't have my customization. Let's just Notepad this thing. I don't care. Let's just go. Okay, great. Now if we do an MVM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Try and grab some of my customizations. This is what I did in Linux. I haven't used MVM a lot in Windows, so I know we're going to have some shenanigans. All right. Looking good, looking good. All right, let's do a check health. Uh, clipboard image. Yeah, that's a Linux thing as a function I created. Running health checks. We're almost done. All right, we're 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 almost done with our updates. I did want to get InVim working properly. I need to revisit InVim and kind of do a clean, fresh install too. LazyVim, it just does a little too much. I'm kind of a minim minimalist kind of guy, so I don't like too much that's in there. And, and there's certain changes that they made I didn't agree with where it deviated too much from the standard in uh, NeoVim. Uh, so that's why I'm like, I, I like the bare bones where I just have some LSP, but not like a ridiculous amount. I don't I don't want it prompting me every time I'm typing, hey, do you, are you really mean this? I'm like, eh, it's not my jam. I'd rather just kind of get done typing and be like, hey, how many errors do I have? More of the linting approach than the LSP approach. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm old. Older, I should say. Not really that old. Um, tree sitter. Uh, let's see. We got a couple errors here. Uh, looks like uh, NPM's missing NeoVim. It does show we have the version. So maybe like a NPM install NeoVim. Everything else looks pretty good, though. Let's see. Okay, that worked. And then if we do a check health, I bet you that error goes away. Yeah, that did it. Okay. So yeah, our NeoVim set up to basically how I do it in Linux. Not quite lazy Vim. It's just my bastardized version of NeoVim that uh, I I personally like. I need to do better. I just haven't yet. All right. We've set these up. Um, I think that guy was saying it didn't work after doing that. It's just setting GPOs. I just, I'm not able to really replicate that issue. Uh, well, let's go ahead and restart and do our updates, I guess. Maybe maybe the updates will fail on a restart. Let's update and restart. Yeah, so you can actually use... Uh, yeah, Tmux kind of exists. Not... not. I mean, you can use Tmux through, obviously, WSL. But, I don't know. I kind of like... Uh, I kind of like staying away from WSL if I'm in Windows. Like, if I want Linux, I'm going to be in Linux, right? So I like to try and do everything through PowerShell in Windows. I know, that's weird. Like, most people are like, no, nah, I'll just use WSL for Tmux and such. But for me, I kind of like to stick with... I like Windows Terminal is pretty good. It's a really good step forward for Windows users. Uh, especially when it comes to terminal and PowerShell and its integration is, is well done, I think. As well done as it can be in Windows. 
So I, I don't even know if I would use Tmux quite the same way. And I don't think it, the Tmux package is available, obviously, in PowerShell, but you don't really need it to be because of Windows Terminal kind of takes the place of Tmux, if that makes sense. Because when it comes to multiplexing, uh, Terminal can do some really wild things. Like if you want like the Quake aesthetic where it drops down from the top, you can do like a docked version of Windows Terminal where you just press a button and it auto launches on startup and it just pops down from the top of the screen. You can do multiplexing. You, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of like having a whole bunch of squares everywhere, like a traditional tiling window. I prefer the tabbed approach. So for me, there's not really a place for Tmux in Windows. For me, Windows Terminal pretty much does everything I want it to do in Windows. Having said that, in Linux, I really like, uh, the same thing applies, but I really like the workspace approach. So I'm in my DWM configuration in Linux, so I'm like, Workspace 1 is going to be the this terminal. Workspace 7 is going to be this terminal, you know, so forth and, and so on. <laughs> Maria, <laughs> nice distro tier list you did. Did you get a lynch mob saying Kali was pointless? I think that was the biggest sticking point with most, most people on the Calyx and uh, or, or Kali Linux. A lot of people saying Kali Linux was so great. And I was like, okay. I'm okay if you critique me for the Kali Linux, but the fact that everyone missed the fact I put Parrot right there with Kali Linux, I, I just can't take you seriously. I can't take anybody seriously saying Kali Linux is amazing and then you don't mention Parrot was also in Pointless. I'm like, mm -mm. your opinion doesn't matter. If you didn't know Parrot existed, I can't, I can't trust your opinion thinking that Kali's there. That, that means you just... Don't know. <laughs> you probably never installed Debian in your life at that point. Uh, because Parrot's like a, a, a more optimized version of Kali. It's a lot lighter weight, has almost the same tool set as Kali. I would say even better. I, I prefer a Parrot. Like if you're a security researcher, install Parrot if you love Kali. Uh, because you, you'll fall in love way more with Parrot. And then you'll be like, oh, well... Yeah, I guess this is all kind of Debian, and then you're probably going to evolve past that into like a Debian type setup. But the fact everyone's pissed off about Kali, I was like, yeah, yeah, y'all a bunch of noobs. <laughs> I know. Uh, I think I'm going to get in trouble with these live streams because I just, I'm too blunt. Oh, that's an error. Direct, uh, direct 3D9 components cannot be hooked right now. It's strongly recommended you restart the application. I mean, let's 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 restart and see if we get the same error. Nah, we didn't get the same error. Okay, well, that might have been just a fluke. Reminences of the startup, maybe. I don't know. Um, and I think that I was saying we're still running into problems with. The Windows update. Let's like reset the update using the utility as well and see what happens. Let's try and break stuff. That's always fun. Get latest updates as soon as they're available on or off. Ugh. What kind of crazy person would turn that on? Um, here we go. Let's let's rip out our updates. Probably should reboot before doing this. Let's live on the edge. So there's a reset Windows update. Let's see what that does. Bits cannot start. It's probably because it's already stopped. Removing WSS. Uh, that's Windows Server Update. Sir, ah, Windows Services Update Server. I don't know. WUSUS. I've always called it just WUSUS. I, I can't remember the acronym. But it. that's fine. There is no key entries for that so that would make sense that it would error out there and everything else looks fine so let's reboot again double check also I'll, I'll just see if that uh, Reva statistics tuner also has problems 99% <laughs> of Windows users turned that on and then it's like why did my system crash is your guinea pig that's why Windows Server Update Services. Thank you. Thank you, Loop. I, I don't know why 
why I was like, ah, I can't remember this. <laughs> it's been a while since I set up Wooses, though. Mm, we did not get any errors that time around. All right, good. Uh, services, I think we're still good. I can't really replicate this guy's issue. But I at least wanted to do like the reset, uh, turn it on and off. Uh, we're not really running the recommended settings right now, which I always, that's like one of the big things. Like sometimes if I'm not going to run my tweaks or my tool, a lot of times I'll just come up here. I like to just hit updates, hit recommended and then go. Um, we did get some issues. Oh, we're not running as admin. Well, that would be a problem. Updates. Yeah, there we go. So I like doing recommended settings there. So then we don't get all the updates. This pushes feature updates back, but grabs security updates. That's what recommended does basically. And it's how almost every business is set up. No, nobody, at least nobody I know that's worth any ounce of, uh, <laughs> spec in the right, the professional sphere. They all put, uh, Windows update and they, we restrict the feature updates because you never want a bleeding edge feature update in a stable environment or a production environment, really any production environment. If you're doing business on your computer, you should run the recommended. You don't have to run the tweaks. You don't have to run anything else from my tool. Just put those recommended in because man, it's going to save you so much heartache because the one downside to win the biggest problem with windows 10, windows 11, the updates, the updates are just set by a crackhead at Microsoft that likes to have you on the absolute bleeding edge. And it's like, why do that to your users? You have the insider program, which, you know, that's for heroin addicts, <laughs> you know, that's for the truly crazy people, um, you know, that like to tick the box on and off, like we discussed earlier, but really those recommended settings make sure that your feature updates don't happen for like a year or I think, yeah, it's 365. So yeah, a whole year of delays of feature updates and then it delays security updates by four days. And you're like, that's a weird arbitrary number. Four days. Why four days, Titus, for security updates? Almost all security updates are done on Tuesday called Patch Tuesday from Microsoft. By delaying it four days, you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So the updates happen Saturday, usually about three in the morning, and it's had four days to look through. So if let's say Microsoft launches a bad patch on Tuesday, well, the guy might be sick on Wednesday or Thursday, but by the time Friday rolls around, they're going to figure out, Hey, that patch is bad and they're going to pull it back. So that's one thing you're going to get a lot less bad patches by doing that. But the second benefit too is if you're running this in a business, you want your patches to go off on like a Saturday morning. So then you get the call Saturday, you know, Saturday morning, you know, usually when you wake up, Hey, windows servers are having problems or the windows workstations are having problems. And that gives you time to go to the business because most businesses run Monday through Friday. Saturday is not a big thing. Obviously if you're in like retail or something, don't, don't run that setting or, or maybe put it to like seven days. So it's a, like a Monday during downtime, but you want those to fire off at a more, um, convenient time for the inevitable bad patch that finally happens. But those are the two big reasons of why those settings are the way they are. Yeah. D four. Thanks for the prime. I disable feature updates. Yeah, you can you can push back feature updates for a good bit. I think up to three years in some instances, but you can't really disable them altogether unless you run like an LTSC. Uh, LTSC doesn't get feature updates, period. But they don't have Microsoft Store either. You can hack LTSC to have Microsoft Store. That's a fun one. I probably should do a video on that. Um, We do have some stuff. Uh, on the front end to force that as admin for whatever reason let's see uh i want to say so we got the run spaces we have this to check to see if it is running as admin attempting to relaunch 
So that's using the web request. USEB went, yeah. I feel like we should add another check into here to run as admin. So apparently that one's just not, not working quite right. Uh, let's do another else if maybe. And see if we can't fix that. That might fix some of those problems. Uh, check if PowerShell is admin. Let's see what we got. It's a pretty good way. So that's Stack Overflow. Let's see what we got here. One second. I'm going to log into my old chat GPT. Okay. Um, add PowerShell script function to relaunch as admin if it isn't already. Okay. Param, blah, blah, blah. Switch force equals false. I kind of like that better. Um, it's almost doing the same thing, I believe, though. If we look, it's current role, administrator. And then if we look at this, yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I, I like to use both because you just don't know. And I like to see if there's any other issues with it. Um, I mean, technically that should have caught it, though, because this is already implemented in our script. Oh, no, this isn't. This is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we're launching from... Okay, this is actually in the test. So this has actually already been committed. So you can see the lightning bolt. That tells us we're running as admin. And if we relaunch here, you can see it's not a lightning bolt. So we're not admin. Let's do... We could do it here. And that launches it, which that's the official main branch. But if we look at our test branch which should be testing 516. So it's been about two months since we worked on it. Let's grab this. We're going to grab the raw file of this. This is our testing branch that we're about to go live with. So let's do an IRM, IEX. Yeah. It relaunched. See? When util needs to be run as admin, attempting to relaunch. It grabbed, a, it looks like just regular PowerShell, not PowerShell core, and then relaunched the script. Yeah, I think Paul, uh, I can't say his name, but he's he did the commit four weeks ago. So, yeah, it's already there. That's cool. All right, neat. Zal, thanks for the prime. Subscribe for three months. All right. <laughs> Why are you torturing yourself with Windows stuff these days? Uh, Windows pays the bills, man. It just does. Can't tell you how much money I've made in my career over just Windows stuff. But I don't mind. You know, I really don't mind Windows. As much as I like to crap on Windows, I really don't mind it that much. I do know it quite well. I'd say I know it a lot better than Linux. And I love Linux because every time I'm in it and I'm messing around, it's it's just more fun. Like if if I like my level of enjoyment of my operating system is so much higher in Linux. But the Windows is kind of what most of the world uses, and it's what I know, like, 20-plus years of experience. I mean, hell, probably 80... No, I'm, I'm close to... Yeah, I'm over 30 years of experience in Windows, because I had 311... Uh, even before 311, actually, we were using DOS, and I... No, we, I don't think we bought Windows 2, though. I think it was my, my parents bought 311, which 311, I want to say, came out in like 92. Windows 311. So, how long have I been using Windows? Uh, Windows 311. When did that come out? 92. Dang. <laughs> How's that for a memory? 31 years. Yeah. So, I've been using Windows for over 30 years. Yeah. Boom. So, it's what I know, like, really, really well. <laughs> Uh, I, I like, uh, my personal favorites, honestly, probably not the cyberpunk one, but cyber RE is my favorite, uh, bootloader. So I'll probably switch over to cyber RE. I think I did Microsoft just as a goof on a live stream. 
Yeah, so the workflow here, I talked a little bit on the start, but it's good to reiterate, is we're going through all the issues we have with here. Um, I'm unable to replicate this. Unable to replicate. Switched between both recommended and default. Also restored Windows update via ah, via config tab everything still works close so i'm going through here and just kind of going in and in fixing things um i want to say <laughs> supple brock nvidia fu <laughs> oh that's awesome um it does we, we got some pull requests let's look at some pull requests what do we got here thank me later oh gosh one main you're done what do you got advanced tweaks <laughs> uh I, I i would go ahead and commit that zach but uh sadly it's it's on the main branch i will i will fix that though i appreciate it that's funny uh, did Supple Frog change this to testing? Did he update the branch? Let's see. Files changed. All right. What do we got? We got EA app from Origin because Origin got sunset. Uh, some versioning. That's fine. Uh, EA app for adding Unity. EA app WinRAR. Oh, man. Poor WinRAR. I think they're finally going to go the way of the Dodo. I've been, you ever want to watch something and get a good laugh, pull up WinRAR's Twitter feed. Every time someone ever buys WinRAR, they make a tweet about it. It's hilarious. <laughs> They're like, another person joins the WinRAR family. And it shows some poor sap that paid $30 for WinRAR. And I'm like, you know, the latest Windows update makes RAR files native. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, oh, but I don't see DDU in here. But this is this is important. We these are all good. It's on the testing branches. I approve of this. That looks very solid. Thank you, Supple Frog. Squash and merge that bad boy. Yeah, Seven Zip. Uh, Seven Zip doesn't get, do a good job with like uh, s sequential RAR files though. Uh, Pzip is usually what I've used in the past. I think Pzip does a pretty good job. I think it'll even do more than even the expansion that they're doing. New theme support, initial fun. Ooh. Oh, that looks cool as hell. Whoa. Nice. What do y'all think? I like the dark theme. It looks neat. Let's resolve some of the conflicts. Let's see. Versioning conflicts. Ah, whatever. It's probably just, what is it? Three conflicts? Okay. Let's close that out. Do, do, do. What's the next one? Uh, okay, so he was still using Origin, and this has Prism Launcher as well. Okay. We'll grab that. All right. I think that should clear up any uh, shenanigans. Mark is resolved. Yes. All right. So now we have that. Look at the pull request again. We should be good. I think we resolved all that. No conflicts. Adding Nomax. Adding theme support. Fixing the compile script. Merging the new theme. So let's look at the changes. So now we have remove item script name. If test path, blah, blah, blah. Remove force. I like that. Change. Nomax. Hmm. Pierre, thanks for this tier one. Yeah. Um. Oh, was that? Did we commit that? No, that wasn't in Win Util, was it? Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, okay. No, no, no. It should be fine. This difference is fine because he's just changing this. So we have the classic theme and then the dark theme. 
So he just added a bunch of theming with the XAML. I mean, I, I like it. Let's, let's, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, Hey, let's rock with this. I want to see this in action. I'm excited over this, this PR. I mean, it's, it's, it could break something, but Hey, let's look at our past PR too, before we go wild here. Um, I want to say that last PR, hopefully that wasn't all in when you till, I should have checked that this obviously con here did a good job, but if we look at our past ones, let's look at our closed. Did he do it properly? Applications. Uh, yeah, I think he did. He just never auto compiled this. So when I resolved those conflicts and I changed this, it doesn't really matter because it's going to compile using a GitHub workflow on that anyways, that'll fix all that. So this doesn't matter. I could honestly just delete the whole file as long as it pushes it through and it'll be fine. I was just looking through here. Why is that changed from Unity and then WinRAR on RAR Labs? So I think he did change some stuff in when you t it's going to get wiped out. I, I don't think that matters anyways. So that that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I like it though. Let's let's see how this looks. I'm I'm pumped. Let's convert this and relaunch. Uh, the raw file is probably not up to date just quite yet. <laughs> Wait for me to break something. It's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always break something every time. That's how you learn, man. You gotta you gotta be able to break stuff. <laughs> if you can't break stuff, then it's like you. I always tell people that if you're afraid of failing and you're you're always want things to work properly, it means you never want to learn anything new. Because if you're gonna learn something new, you gotta be okay with it breaking or things going south. I mean, otherwise you're just gonna know what you already know. That's no, that's just not fun. <laughs> Move fast and break stuff. Oh gosh, that's Facebook's slogan. Eesh. Don't turn me into Mark Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> It'd be terrible. <laughs> I keep telling them at work and they keep frowning when things break. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're going to test something, you might as well test it in production. <laughs> oh, I love that meme. The Dos Equis guy is like, I don't always test my code, but when I do, I make sure it's in production. <laughs> but, you know, it's the way Elon does it. It's so true. <laughs> Let's let's test out some rate limiting, shall we? All right, raw files should be regenerated now. Um, where is where's the new theme? Oh, that's weird. That's kind of cool. Um, but how do you switch the theme around? Theme. I guess I should have. Uh, Looked closer on that PR. It, it's kind of weird. Hmm. Well, let's just see. Let's just recompile it. Let's just launch when you till. Is that how it should look? Okay, this, this looks better. It's like, that's like a little weird. Of how I was highlighting things. But. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I like the way I do it with a test branch. So you get to test it. In kind of a semi-production environment. Where you can run it on multiple machines. Multiple places. And I like to leave that test branch there. So other people do the same thing. When they're doing new commits. So then when they do something, they can commit and they'll be like, okay, this works. Or sometimes they might be like, oh, the last commit was bad. They might fix my last bad commit. <laughs> and I kind of like to leave that test branch there for like a month or two. And then there's those sprints where like we're right in the beginning of one right now where we're going through issues, PRs, and then we'll start going through the project and going, hey, we're going to improve and add these files. And then you get the best product overall. 
uh, this, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't feel like the, let's just lazy G compile. Let's just see. Um, oh, oops. <laughs> look at my, it's like, look at that. <laughs> uh yeah uh let's just get pull um get status what what happened here wait what what, what ooh. you see nothing we'll just drop that uh uh hmm what did i do uh abort merge abort merge whoa what did i do uh, uh, okay. Is there like a better way of accepting or denying? I feel like I'm doing it wrong. And if I feel like I'm doing it wrong, usually that means I am doing it wrong. Uh, there's got to be a developer just sitting out in the audience, just cringing like crazy the way I'm doing these. There, there should be like a click accept in VS Code. I, I feel like that's a thing, right? Was there another one? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it just looked like a versioning issue. All right, fine. But what am I pushing? <laughs> the question. What exactly am I pushing here? Um, no max, EA, the themes. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Oh, no, it's going to delete that. That's not right. I'm, I'm going to just stash and dar drop this whole thing. I feel like this is not, I feel like I had some bad commits there. The, why don't you use the git diff GUI? I don't know about it. Oh yeah, top five. I don't know, I'd say that one where I deleted my entire uh, data directory was pretty up there. I think I was, I was just trying, oh, I was trying to do the fastest Arch install and let's just do a stash drop. I don't trust this at all, like what? There are no entries. Uh, can I not get stash? No local changes. Why? Well, hmm. My local. Why? It wants me to push these things, but I don't want to push them. Uh, revert changes. Damn it. No. No. I don't want to do any of this. Let's just go to main branch. I don't know. I think I can overwrite my files and then go back to the test branch and it'll be fine. I don't know. See, this is, I, I might be, I still might not know how to use freaking GitHub properly. Okay. Um, when in doubt, uh, let's just, uh, let's just remove uh, when you tell. Oh, you do not have sufficient. You do not have sufficient. <laughs> oh, fine, 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 fine. Let's just remove it all. What? I'm admin. That works. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I have here. Let's just clone that again. Fixed it. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I was doing wrong there. Uh, let's look at what is in this test branch. I'm curious to see, did some of this stuff get wiped out? I better not have wiped out my, my changes. It, no, it wouldn't have. So if we look at when util, we have, okay, fine. We'll just compile it. Okay. Now, if we look at when util, okay, cool. The admin elevation is there now. We have all the new stuff. So now if we were to launch this with a standard prompt, it'll automatically elevate to an admin prompt, launch it, and we should have theming. So let's just go win util. Boom. It says, hey, attempting to relaunch as admin. Perfect. That's all great. But the theming didn't come over. Hmm. Let's look in here and see if we can find, I think it was called classic. Oops. 
classic. I remember him. Yeah. So classic theme, matrix theme. Okay. So where is that specified? Input set classic. Okay. So if we look back here, if we call this like matrix, <laughs> I want to see this new theme. I'm just super pumped. I got so sidetracked. Let's recomp. Okay. That changes it back. Uh, Oops. Let, let's just see what the matrix theme looks like. Matrix. Um, let's just go win util. Oh, that was a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, maybe we need to recompile it uh, with that. So let's just go to, uh, I want to say that would be in our functions. Whereabouts would it be? So let's just go dash theme name. Let's just copy this. Let's just do a control shift F. Find it in the main PS1. And we got matrix right here. So then if we do a compile, relaunch, this should launch into the matrix theme, but it doesn't, even though it did change. If we look back here, oh, man. Yeah, so there's the matrix theme there matrix that's a yeah so here's the theme and matrix maybe caps matter <laughs> caps matter all right here we go let's just maybe it's just a misspelling kind of thing <sighs> nope man i really like this pr i think it's a cool pr that i would just dig i know it's just something as simple as a theme but I don't know. I, I dig it. Dig the themes. Set when you theme matrix. If parameter true, mandatory true, position zero, input, theme name matrix. Oh, all right. What do we think? What do we think? What could cause that? Let's, uh, Let's first drop it. Let's go from admin so we don't have it relaunch into a disappearing PowerShell. We launch uh, win util. We go win util over here. And wait, 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 wait. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. Hell yeah. Okay. I want a button though for it now. I don't think he created a button. I think it was just like on there and then not. And also that's a, a little bit different. Might change that around too. Um, is this the int reset? Mm, probably. I'll run that later. I kind of dig it. What do you guys think? I, I'm going to ask chat dark theme or classic by default. I'm kind of partial to the dark theme i kind of i truly dig the 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 feel of it feels less uh less stock all right all right i'm gonna do a poll i'm gonna do a poll hold up hold up let's do a poll we we gotta know we just gotta know mm -mm -mm. twitch where are you at twitch all right one second classic theme or dark Theme for win util. Classic dark. Let's start it. I'm kind of curious. Where do we land on this? Um, this is going to be the dark theme right here. And then let's just, uh, wow, oh, hell, we can, you know what? <laughs> let's just launch it twice. I think it, I think it will work just fine. All right. So we got classic and that. Which which shall you choose? You're gonna go with the dark dark mode, or you're gonna go with the light mode? Hmm. Dark default classic as an option. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. The tool reduced process count considerably, especially with setting uh, a lot of the services to manual. <laughs> Have it switch automatically every sixty seconds. Oh, that's awesome. That's one way to doing it. Oh. That's a cool commit, though. I got to tell him. I got to give that person props. I love this one. 
See, for every every commit you get, you know, every PR and weird issue that people complain about for like open source GitHub, I would have never done that. That's just awesome. A oh, hash didn't match. It probably probably didn't do a compile or something um, from the last bit. Let's see where we're at. How we doing? Oh, look at that. Dark mode's crushing it. That's what I'm talking about. Can you change the title bar to dark? Not, not really. So what we're doing, a lot of people ask me why I don't just use like WinUI 3. Like if you're unfamiliar with WinUI 3, it's probably what I would do for like my C Sharp program. But what that does is it themes things according to like a Windows 11 aesthetic. So you, when you go into settings, this is the WinUI 3 theme. I can totally create something with this. I just can't paint it in real time using XAML in PowerShell. So what's happening on the back end, just so folks understand, is when we're drawing these, this is all being drawn using XAML in PowerShell. PowerShell is creating this program in real time. And I did it this way so everything would be open for the user, for the person that wants to contribute, or the person wants to just take my program and use it somewhere else in the real world, whatever, whatever your use case. I did that because I wanted it to be completely open end to end for just development. And, and it's really good. But the limitations of that is I can't pull in extra libraries. I would pull in like the WinUI 3 library, toss it up, make it look absolutely beautiful like it belonged right in Windows. I just can't do that in uh, PowerShell. This is this is pretty damn pretty for it being PowerShell driven UI though. <laughs> Let's be frank, there's not too many programs out in the world that can do that in PowerShell. This is still PowerShell. It's just a, a GUI front end written <laughs> using PowerShell. So that's why. Yeah, that's that's awesome. All right, let's see where what the end result was. I think we, we know where this is headed. The end result was where to go. Where did, where's it at? A few results. There we go. Dark with 81% of the vote, 30 people saying yes to dark, only seven and 19% going with classic. So then the thing becomes, well, we got to create a button for the mode switch. And how do we do that? That's the next thing, right? I mean, hmm. Because it draws it from PowerShell. This can be tricky because it spits it out. So I'd have to like kill the process and then relaunch it with the new input when someone clicks light theme. Probably. Oh, that'll be tricky. That's neat though. I like it. Well, yeah, but that's for dark theme, light theme on Windows itself. So when you launch it, um, which, how is this working here? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's, let's just commit this to test. Dark mode enable is what we're going to call this one. We'll push that over to testing. What if I like this better? Someone mentioned use the system preference. I like that. I think Faye, you're onto something there. You could prompt before you launch it. I think what we do is we just detect what theme it is for the system. If it's already in dark theme and you launch it, it launches in dark mode. If you're a light mode user, it sees, hey, you don't have dark mode enabled in Windows, therefore, I'm going to launch you in light mode or classic mode. I like that because it, it takes away uh, that choice from the user, but not really. The users, it just auto detects. This person likes dark mode. Windows is set to dark mode. Therefore, I'm going to launch in dark mode. I like that. I like that a lot. I, I think that's really the fix here. So... The best way to do that would be probably dark mode. 
All right. So we get the property for themes personalize. And I think we'll just steal this whole thing. And what we're going to do, we might be able to just call this function. No, because I want to do something other than return true, return false. So we're going to just copy this. Let's look at the launch here at the very beginning. I think it was under main. Let's go main right here. So what we'll do, let's just set app and system equal to this. If it equals zero, then set to true. Get item property, themes, personal light, apps, use, system, use, light theme, return true. This would be set theme color. Let's put CTT theme color. We'll just put CTT theme. That's fine. Equal. And then we're going to say equal to matrix like that. And then CTT theme, boom, equal to classic. And then over here, we should be able to put CTT theme. And therefore, if I'm thinking this right, it would detect your personalized theme in Windows. If it is light, it would say, okay, cool, it's dark. And then go forward from there. I, The only thing I'm unsure about is if it's in dark mode, will it show up as light mode and, and vice versa? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really dig it. I know this is just such silly. I probably should have actually done some real work today <laughs> instead of getting instead of getting uh, squirreled over into another another thing. But I was like, "Ooh, that'll be cool." A theme. I mean, looks are important. Say what you will, but if an app looks super ugly, people don't like using super ugly. I think this would be a nice little touch. Uh, with that said, we will do a compile. Zoop. That should rewrite when you till. And then let's launch it. Um, and we're just going to go when you till. Okay, dark mode. So let's go to tweaks. Let's turn dark mode off, disabling it, right? So this should change the next launch. So we go here. <laughs> oh how you like them apples so then we enable dark mode relaunch oh yeah <laughs> oh that's cool all right oh that's cool i dig it okay cool let's let's make sure stuff still installs and you can use it um Let's just install like 7-zip. That's a pretty easy install. Yeah. Found an existing package already. Cool. Man, that's slick. That is a cool, cool commit. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Okay. Uh, let's go lazy G. Uh, auto detects theme. That is what we wrote. Perfect. So that's pretty much testing. I think we're pretty much ready to go live with testing and push this out. And then I probably will follow back up in, in with it later in the day and just see if there's anything else. I, I think we go ahead and do a giant PR with the merge of the main branch too. So what do we want to do here? Let's go PRs. We've cleared out all the PRs today. Knocked out like 10 issues. Still 207 to go. I'll probably do some later tonight too. I'm going to get all these issues worked through though. We're really going to, we're really going to hammer some stuff home. So we have that. Let's just go to the main here. We're going to switch the testing branch and then do T uh, PR. So everyone else can, grab that whoa it says one commit behind what's it behind it says that that's a power profile ultimate performance what no right let's let's make sure i don't want to wipe that out 
Invoke WPF ultimate in performance. Invoke WPF. Yeah, I wrote all this when I did. Uh, there was a problem with uh, ultimate performance the last time I was writing, and I fixed it. But yeah, this this works. And the okay, I'm just double checking really fast uh, to make sure that does doesn't get wiped out because I worked real hard on that one. That was a pain to fix. That took me like hours. It was I don't know why it was so difficult, but it it looks fine. So fix going main to here, compare main. Oh, this is actually taking main and merging it into testing. It looks like showing two change files. Wait a second. What? I'm just going to come back to testing. I don't know why you should be able to just go open a pull request. 17 commits. Okay. So we got a power profile network reset with NetSH. We've got a bunch of verbose logins, auto launching with admin, uh, added undo script and implementing it for all the tweaks, package name, uh, some .NET fixes, uh, Docker desktop addition, fix of git installed, um, update when you till. What was that? Oh. This guy actually put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> Let's fix this commit real fast because this shouldn't be redist dash. This should be just VC re like that. Yeah, could try a different word too, but you know me, backups. Psh, who needs backups? We can always go back in history too. Uh, but if we look at applications, and come into .NET. I think it was right here. Yeah, okay, so this is here. That's fine. VC Redist 2015 plus. That's what it should be. So I, I don't know what that was. That should be under applications. For whatever reason, I guess that didn't uh, make it over. I'll have to look at that after the commit. Um, anything else in here sticking out? All right, and this is everything for the day that we did. We did the fixing the EULA on the auto login, replacing origin uh, with EA app now, new theme support, dark mode. Man, that's that's the most important things right there. Um, and then if we look through some of the commits, everything looks good. Docker, that's the change for VC redist apps. Oh yeah, G pseudo. Uh, I need to I need to make a video about G sudo. If people are haven't used that, man, it is life changing. Winget UI, Prism Launcher, just some cool, cool, cool stuff. Um, bah, 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 bah. I think all that's good. Let Let's do it. Okay, dope. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Is it installed to easily install drivers via PowerShell? Uh, I wouldn't do that. I would do, um, if you really want to go that route, I would highly recommend just doing a full, oh, what is it? Snappy driver origin tool. I would use that. I need to put SDIO in this and it's on my to-do list. It's actually in programs for the next update. If we look, I have SDIO in here. I do, right? Right? Somewhere? There's a lot of programs I need to add. Uh, damn. Okay. Maybe maybe I have that as a full... That's gotta be... Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Add snappy driver origin tools for drivers. I was like, I know I've created an issue. Issue number 642 is that one. We're definitely adding it because snappy driver origin tool is... Frankly, there's no way I could do a better job than that tool has done. And managing drivers in Windows is just kind of maddening, especially from PowerShell. Everything can be done from PowerShell, but I'd much rather you use just Snappy Driver Origin Tool. It's going to do a better job. It really will. And it, the way it fetches new drivers and stuff, it's just phenomenal. So I, I would just use that tool. Hmm. All right. There we go. These are all the ones. We're doing the tests. Unit tests are coming through. Hey, one of the unit tests succeeded. 
This one failed. Resolving XAML file relative to current directory. Um, one or more tests failed. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sure it's fine. You know, unit tests are more of like suggestions than really uh, problems. <laughs> I feel bad for any professional programmers that watch me on stream. They're just like, oh, God, don't ever hire Titus. He would ruin everything. <laughs> um, all right. We already checked our commits, files. We got our PR. We're ready to go to main. Let's. Uh, oh, wait. We need to resolve conflict. Nah, it's probably just version numbers. Should be fine. Was it just... Oh, it's 50 conflicts? Oh, good night. There's got to be a better way of doing this. I'm trying to think. I'm almost tempted to just delete the WinUtil and then recompile it. Um, should, like, recompile it anyways, but... I don't know. Okay, I'm not going through every one of these. That's just, that's just ridiculous. Oh, bah. What the hell? Can we just accept all of these? Accept all of the testing. Um, all right, everybody close their eyes. I'm going to do something really fast. This is going to be totally okay. Just, uh, look the other way for a second. And, uh, I fixed everything. Okay, you can look back now. Perfect. We're ready. <laughs> 50 conflicts. Done. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, merging is blocked. Uh, sure, it's fine. We're going to bypass some of those protections. Anything else being a problem? I don't think so. Do, do, do. I guess we'll, well, let's wait. We'll wait for the check to run. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, when you till should recompile, I would never do that if it was like a bunch of config files. But technically, on a commit like this, it should just compile just fine. Um, should I wait for my unit test to finish? I mean, we all know what I'm going to do here. I mean, it was just, yeah, we're not waiting. Squash and merge. Let's go. Bam. Done. Safely merged and closed. We're good. So... Now we just wait. Dude, that was that was the 881st commit. Dang. Actually, there's been more commits than that. Because that was just uh wow. We've been going for a while on this project. A lot of people like it. Let's see. Has the raw file updated? Yes. Raw file is up to date. Moment of truth. It's live. Done. Ah, that's cool. That is so cool. All right, well, cool. So we did a, some pretty big updates today. Got through, uh, you know, a couple, and like maybe a dozen issues. Uh, finished all our PRs. We got this cool new theme from a PR that detects what mode you're running. If you're running in dark mode, you get this cool look. If you're running in light mode, you get the classic look. A um, couple other little bug fixes here and there. There was a bunch of commits already sitting on the test branch that have been going for about a month or two uh, since uh, 516, so almost two months. Um, well, let's go ahead and delete that branch, I think. Let's just come back into our win util. And we'll go ahead and delete that branch, create a new branch, call it testing 713 or 07 13 2023 I think that'd be fine. So let's just view all our branches. We're going to delete this one. We're going to create a new one. 
we're just going to call this one 07 13 or actually let's just call it uh 15 i'm not going to work on it until saturday probably 2023 and testing so that'll be the next branch we're creating and then we already have some of the issues we're working through all of those will go through and then if uh we need more we'll i'd say every 15 or so commits we do we'll probably commit this back to main after some testing let's just create this new branch that's going to be the new testing branch that we're going to use and now everybody can enjoy hopefully all that those changes how to run the testing uh branch it should auto compile when these changes are committed and then you you can just grab the raw file so if you're in testing and you're like hey uh when you till you want this one just come here grab the raw file if you want to test the testing branch copy this url come into your powershell with admin uh close you and then you just do like an irm which is invoke rest method irm paste that entire raw file and then just do a pipe symbol and then iex and that will launch the test branch version so if there's something on the test branch you want to mess around with or test out yourself by all means that's how you grab the raw file from that branch and run it Otherwise, you can just use the main branch. And the main branch should be more tried and true. And uh, we'll see what happens. I usually like to make a tweet after doing this. Uh, it's a pretty pretty big change in some of those. Uh, we'll go new theme and a bunch of bug fixes or win util. Try them out. So we'll shoot that out. So that's it. Alex, how's it going? We just finished with a whole bunch of when you till stuff we're, we're updating. Got a new theme, a whole bunch of new bug fixes, auto launch back into admin. If you launch it as not as admin, a whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, adds a sound switch in the download section. It's a good software like Ear Trumpet. Okay, yeah. I'll need to, I'll need to add that in there. I, I honestly still like Envy Clean Install. I hate using GeForce Experience, and I only use it when I absolutely have to. I think my inside box has GeForce Experience because I needed to use uh, Moonlight on my Steam Deck because I wanted to stream some games. Yeah, and you really shouldn't trust a lot of the drivers from NVIDIA because they do have a lot of bad driver software. Like... NVIDIA is another one where like wait a couple days when they launch a new driver. Unless it's like a game that just came out and you need the driver update that just launched. Like Diablo 4 comes to mind. You needed to update your drivers. Otherwise, I'd say don't mess with it. It's fine. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, NVIDIA drivers are, are a mess. And honestly, it's a mess in Linux. It's a mess in Windows. It's it's just the NVIDIA experience. Uh, they still are probably a top market share, though. Everyone always is like, I'm going to buy an a AMD GPU, and then they never do. Every, everyone still pretty much buys NVIDIA, except for me. I usually rock uh, AMD GPUs. Yeah, the WinUI later on, I think I'm going to put on the Windows One Shot. Uh, WinUI 3 requires libraries that I can't really import and use as XAML uh, when launching through PowerShell. So that was the big problem. Uh, at least I, I'm not skilled enough to do it. I, I couldn't figure out a way to do it. If someone shows me how to do like a base configuration of WinUI 3 using uh, XAML and PowerShell, hey, <laughs> I would I would love to do that. But otherwise, I think I'm going to just have to wait till I program up uh, my, my sister program in uh, C Sharp. But overall, fun, fun. I think this is a success, guys, for today. I'm going to shut her down. Next Tuesday, we'll be able to get a lot more going. Uh, getting into these projects, it's always a little bit uh, difficult in the beginning because you're you, this one, I love all the feedback and all those issues. Like I said, even the issues are like, it broke. I don't know what happened. I ran tool. It broke. 
<laughs> you get those, but some of those can even be helpful, especially if there's a screenshot to go along with it. Like that first one, I was like, oh my gosh, here comes another one. And then I was like, oh wait, there might be like a BitLocker service there that, that might, might interfere with it. And maybe I'll adjust the automatic settings to be, to push that to automatic and start on startup for the stock configuration. And that would fix like that guy's problem probably. And uh, that's one thing I love, but it's, it's really just kind of getting going and you kind of start to see, I, I don't think you guys got to see very much of me adding things to the production or the project because the project right now is looking, I got it right here. These, this is what I have for to do in progress workshop, and then what's done. And then what we do is go through the in progress, knock these out. And they're like, Hey, let's go to the to do. And really this should look more like this. So this is the workflow workshopping fixes is over here. This is queued up, ready to be worked on. This is the stuff that's like, uh, Hey, pressing the next update, this should be in it. Absolutely 100% the in progress. And then when it's done, you just throw over here. Known issues where I like, I don't have a fix for it. Like installing Spotify through admin prompt screws everything up. <laughs> uh, just by how Spotify is set up. I, I don't get that one. So uh, this is kind of where we're at. But I just add those issues in after I document them a little bit better, clean them up, maybe change the title around if it's like, a, not a great title and then i know how to do it then when we get into programming and we've got a nice fresh branch we're ready to program we just start fixing and then committing and then then that's how the development cycle goes uh using such a big open source project like this which over 5,000 stars now so thank you for everybody that's used and downloaded it's such great feedback all in all and so many great commits so many people coming in helping and then other people coming in and, and submitting issues as long as the issues are pretty well documented that can really help too and then of course you do have the riffraff that comes with open source where you just have a weird issues that pop up that you're like okay come on man I, that's not from the tool that's from something else you did you ran like five other things then you ran my stuff <laughs> So that happens too, but uh, you, you got to take it the good with the bad, but I, I love it. And like I said, the, the best thing about this is I can use this to make other stuff. And there's so much feedback here that you can learn so much more about windows and, uh, Hey, if you do this tweak, this will happen because it may not happen for you, but it might happen for them because their setup is completely different. And that's just wildly beneficial oh modern app folders for symlinks i have to take a look at that alex <laughs> yeah i did notice one thing alex on that uh if you ever do OneDrive, i know i know you're not a one guy drive or one one drive guy um you go to uninstall OneDrive, and your default folders are still set to your username OneDrive documents, pictures, you know, desktop. And you're like, what the hell? I uninstall OneDrive and it's still under the OneDrive folder in your home folder. It doesn't revert it back to how it should be, which is your username, desktop, documents, videos. Maddening. Maddening. Oh, Microsoft. So I have to write a script to fix that too because Microsoft's too lazy to fix their own stuff. <laughs> I hate, I hate the OneDrive tree. So I'm going to write, that's probably going to be an, its own separate function script because there's a lot that's going to go into fixing that. There's going to have to be a lot of like, uh, conditional statements to verify, Hey, this things did get moved over because I don't want to delete anybody's files. And I want to make sure when we remove OneDrive, it just removes it and also fixes the folder structure and then properly fixes the environmental paths for windows. Why that's not incorporated with a, Win on a OneDrive uninstall is, oh, just one of the Microsoft things. <laughs> it's a feature. It's a feature. It's not a bug. It's a feature. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's just one of those things. But we'll, we'll keep going on it, man. Like I said, this, this month, I'm pretty much dedicating the rest of the month to the, the WinUtil. But all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. 
get to working out uh and uh hopefully don't die how hot is it um 102 there's a heat warning hmm gonna get a little extra sweat today all right let's get it <laughs> all right y'all have a great one see y'all next tuesday peace